Hi, good morning. Ah, uh, thank you. I'm Su Fujimoto from Tokyo, and uh, really, really happy to be here today. Uh, I have, I think, the 30 minutes something, so I will start. I like to talk about my background at the beginning. Uh, yeah, this is my background. The grown up in the nature field, the Hokkaido, the Northern Island, until the high school, and then coming to Tokyo, the crazy, ugly city in, from the university days. And I'm now based in Tokyo. So this is, it looks completely opposite. But for me, I feel kind of a similarity between two of them, or I, both of them has, are sharing the nice quality, I think, because both of them, yeah, one is beautiful and one is very ugly, but the both of them are made by really small pieces, creating kind of a human scale cozy spaces. Even in Tokyo, yeah, it is created by many, many small pieces, as you can see. And of course, in the forest, it is like that. And it's open field, so you can walk around in the forest to find out really exciting places or unexpected places. And in Tokyo as well, yeah, you will feel walking around to find out new shops or new cafes or something like that. So for me, both of them quite similar. And that kind of understanding uh, moved me to think about how we can treat nature things and artificial things, both of them as equals, and trying to integrate them together to create a really better uh, living environment. So that is the starting point of my architecture career. And then all of the works are, how to say, yeah, our topic, my topic is how we treat nature things, architecture things together, sometimes integrating together, but not only nature things and architecture things, sometimes that kind of simplicity, complexities, or outside, inside, straightness and softness, such kind of a, a opposite interesting values, try to integrate them together to create new values from them. This is the Serpentine Pavilions last year I did in London, in the Kensington Gardens. And it is like a yeah, cloud-like structures for uh, the temporary summer pavilions. And the basic program was cafe inside, but uh, they can use it for not only the, for the cafes, but more like, a, a, how to say, the multiple uses for the lectures or event or dinners or something like that. Yeah, this is the, the, the locations. So the left hand, you have a, the uh, Seventh Gallery buildings itself. It is a contemporary art gallery. And then the front courtyard, is the place uh, of, the, of the structure. And uh, what I did was to use really thin two centimeter steel pipes to create the grids structures, 40 centimeter grids and sometimes 80 centimeter grids to create the whole structures and the whole space. So what you see is you have many, many lines. It is a steel bars to create the whole space. You couldn't see where is outside, where is inside, Be because it is so many layers of the lines, but it has inside and it has outside, but it's almost uh, mel melting together. And it's like this. So it is made by really artificial order, but finally your impression is like a cloud. And uh, the woman's on the, on the roof, it is, we have uh, steps on the roof uh, made by the glass. So it's al almost floating on the, on the cloud. So that kind of a new experimentation of the architecture, architecture field. And of course, the process was quite tough, but the, the starting point was cafe. So cafe is the place where people can behave as they like in a very, very different way. So we try to provide not just a fixed function of the cafes, but uh, like a landscape. You can sit on the hill or you can use the stepping areas seating or tables or something like that. So it's like an artificial landscape. And then, of course, at the same time, it is surrounded by beautiful greens. So I try to create nice communications between our structures and the surrounding beautiful greens. Sometimes it's really transparent, so you can see through the structures into the, into the greens. Or sometimes the greens and the stru white structures is making a really beautiful contrast. So that kind of a to, uh, how to say, two-point landscaping uh, field 
for people to behave as they like, and the transparent structures was this uh, uh, project. And this is the model. And finally, it's done. So as you can see, this is like a cloud-like mountain where you can climbing up on it or you can come inside on it. But this 40 centimeter size is the size I choose for like a furniture for people. So you can sit on or stepping, walking up, that kind of a multiple use uh, scales. And inside is something like that. And you will see the stepping like auditorium-like uh, or hill-like spaces so people can use that space as they like. And of course, yeah, we provide the usual furniture for that. And then yeah, you will see how transparency is changing. Yeah, usually in architecture, we have fixed windows and the walls, but in here, no definition, no uh, divisions of the windows and the walls. It's all, everything is melting. And the transparency is gradually changing uh, according to your position, according to your directions. So in here, the between windows and the walls, the boundaries are blurring and vanishing, and between inside and outside is blurring. Yeah, this is, again, the hill-like spaces. So sit on. You could find really isolated, cozy corners, or you could feel, find a big, big auditorium-like spaces, or you could just try to, to walk around. Oh, sorry. And sometimes, yeah, this space could work as a the auditorium-like space. Then the impression is so different from the, the previous images. So this kind of a multi-functional spaces is like a, how to say, melting the functions and the, to create a new meanings depending on each different peoples, depending on the weathers, depending on the seasons. So the meanings of the functions, meanings of the architectures is more and more, how to say, positively fluid, positively ambiguous, and uh, could make the richness of the, uh, of the functions. So in that sense, I think, the between nature and architecture I talked, it is quite super artificial structures, but it is creating such kind of a positively ambiguous field for people to have an interaction with the spaces or to have an interaction with the surroundings. So that is the first examples for our, our projects. And then, this is a private house in Tokyo. And again, this is made by really thin frames. And it's not the usual house. Of course, it's a house for a young couple, so it's a real house. But it not looks like a, a usual house, because the point of this house is try to avoid the usual uh, formation of the living space, uh, bed space, uh, sleeping space, or bedrooms, something like that. But try to create more varieties in the house. Yeah, you have 20 different areas in this small, small house because we divided the house into small spaces. And they, these floors, small floors, are sometimes 1.5 meter by 1.5 meter. So it's almost like a size of the tables. And then we lay out it in a different levels. So it is something like this. So it's half furniture and half house integrations of the two different values to create the varieties of the spaces. So your choice is really, really increasing for your life. And uh, everything is really straight, made by steel, but the whole experience is more like uh, living in the tree, climbing into the another branches to find a more, how to say, brighter areas, or going down into another branches to be more protected, cozy areas. So it is super artificial structures, but the, the deep concept is to create kind of a spaces between nature field and architecture field. And the scale is going up into the Middle East country. This project we proposed, but the project finally stopped. But it's a huge 1.5 kilometer long shopping street uh, was the program. So it's a huge, huge program. But we try to create the whole structures, again, like a serpentine pavilion, by the repetition of the grids. Here you will see many, many arches are creating, are coming together to create the spaces. So something like this. And the whole structure is something like that. So the serpentine case, the whole shape was like a cloud. But in this case, we got an inspiration from the Bedouin tent, the uh, local uh, tent structure. So it is something like that. 
and it is creating the huge void inside. This void could work as a natural ventilation tower. So in such a Middle East climate, we try to take in the rather cool air from the bottom, and then the hot air is going up. So the whole, uh, these seven, eight towers we have, but the whole tower is working as a natural ventilation towers. And the whole grid is working as a kind of a, the filtering the strong sunlight into more comfortable particle of light is coming in into the tide. So this is the huge project, but uh, we are thinking about how to react to the climate situation. And uh, using the similar ideas of the serpentines to make uh, the repetition of the, uh, the units. So then it is, of course, it's again super artificial structures and super architectural structures, but it is creating like a, uh, the new environment controlling the sunlight or controlling the temperatures. And sometimes, yeah, in the, one of the voids, it has a huge waters, and the control of the sunlight is coming in. So it's really amazing, crazy uh, spaces inside. And the view is, like they say, it's really, really beautiful. Unfortunately, it stopped, but uh, we could have a chance to expand our ideas to use the small grids together to create the organic, half organic and half artificial spaces. And then the scale is now coming down into the small, small project, the public toilet project in Japan. Actually, the public toilet is quite unique, interesting programs, I think, because the public toilet is public, but the toilet itself is quite private. So how to do with the private and public things, between private and public? Or, yeah, of course, this site was more rather like a nature field. So we like to open, but we have to close. So how we can define the inside and outside openness and closeness? And of course, the toilet things is really, really, how to say, human nature things. But uh, finally, we have to control that kind of things. So between human nature and between more, how to say, intellectual uh, something. So even in such a quite small project, I think we have in architectural programs, we have the very interesting contrast of the two opposite values of the things. And our mission is how, try, how to create a nice integrations between such a two opposite but fundamental values. And in this case, we proposed, yeah, this was the conceptual drawings, the huge flower beds and the toilets in it. And then the finally, it is something like this. Here you will see the toilet in the glass box and the wall. Yeah, this is something like that. So this black wall is surrounding the huge areas. It is blocking the view from the surroundings. So inside of the wall is really protected. And then we have a glass box. So you will see, you will enjoy the vast spreading view even from the inside of the toilet. So we have a doors, door in front of the, the wall and then you can lock it. So it's getting to be a private garden. And then you will enjoy, I don't know, should enjoy or just to do the toilet. But anyway, it is something different from a usual experience of the uh, toilet. Because the surroundings are beautiful, the countryside landscape. So I don't want to block the view like a usual toilet. I like to enjoy the view, but at the same time, I like to block the privacies. I like to keep the privacies. So that kind of a, kind of a contradiction situations is the really creative situation, I think. And our solutions was that. It's quite simple and quite low budget, but to open the possibilities to enjoy nature things and still keeping the functions. Yeah, this is the entrance. So you will see the private gardens inside, but still it's half open and half closed. Something like this. And this is an existing tree, so we try to keep the existing nature uh, situations as much as possible. And uh, yeah, this was, this toilet was getting so famous after the finishing. So many, many tourists is now coming to this toilet to see the toilet. So using the big bus, not only one bus, but the two bus, three buses is coming, and the, the many people is coming out. 
to see or sit on and take a photos or something like that. And finally, city government, the clients, found out so many people come in. And then some of them like to do the toilet. But uh, so many people are there, so they couldn't do the toilet, even though this is a toilet. Then finally, government decided to put the movable temporary toilet on this toilet, for this toilet. So that was quite a strange story. But we made a toilet, but finally, toilet attracted so many people, then have to make another, another uh, toilet for that. But anyway, this is a private house. Again, we uh, designed the multiple boundaries. In this toilet project, yeah, the key of the design was how to multiple the boundaries not only using the one wall, but to divide the walls into the bigger wall and the glass small walls. Then you could enjoy the view, but you could be blocked from the surroundings. And this private house as well, we have uh, three layers of the, the walls with many, many openings. And the, the outer layers, is, it is a structures, but it has the many, win many openings without glass. So inside of this big box is like an outside garden something like this. So it is protected, it is surrounded. So it is like a half interior, half, half exterior, but it is really exterior spaces. So even the garden is part of your uh, uh, nice uh, living environment. And then, yeah, this is outside. So it is like a sheltering, not only house, but uh, the garden itself to create your own living environment as a whole. And then from outside, it's like this big box. But you will see no glass on the openings. So you will see through uh, this house. And then if you step inside, you have like a small forest. Then, but the four whole forest are uh, protected by the big, big shell. And if you are deep inside, you will see three different layers, small box with openings, and the middle box with openings, and the big box with openings. So you was protected by the three layers of the walls, concrete walls, but still it has many, many openings and the layering of the openings could create various different view to various different directions to the sky. So you have huge openness. At the same time, you have really well protected feelings. So that kind of openness and the protected feelings, usually it is on the opposite side, but both of them are quite fundamental values. Tried, we try to integrate them together to create kind of a new uh, in-between spaces in your, in your private house. So again, yeah, this is kind of a, like an in-between spaces, like a Japanese traditional house, but we try to translate it into more contemporary way. And then finally, yeah, we can mix the real uh, nature, forest field, and the contemporary uh, house life together. So I have two more projects. This is a library in Tokyo. Yeah, of course, usually the library is the place of the books, so no nature inside. But I try to create the experience like a walking around in the forest as a library. Because the yeah, library is the place where many, many books. But this is a library for the art university. So I was imagining <coughs> the students of the professors coming into these libraries and walking around, just like walking in the forest, to get uh, some inspirations or to encounter to some unexpected books. So that is why we started from the concept, the forest of the books. And then finally, this is it. And the whole, all the walls are covered by the bookshelf. So it is the labyrinth-like bookshelf areas, bookshelf the spaces. And uh, the whole structure is something like this, starting from a really small bookshelves, and then it's growing like a spiral shape, and then finally it's getting like a huge 6,000 square meter big libraries. But the whole, all the walls are bookshelves with many, many openings, like the previous uh, private house project. Then you will see the layers, many, many layers of the bookshelves. You will feel kind of an infinite layers of the bookshelves. That makes you how to say, really interested 
in the space next, next, next layers, starts to walking around to find something new behind the walls or some new expectations behind, behind the walls, something like that. That kind of uh, uh, things happening repeatedly, infinitely almost. So that makes you walking around and sometimes, of course, you can stop by any places and then starts to read or starts to take a nap or something like that. But the important point is these kind of layerings is creating the half open, half protect, protected feelings. And then it is making, inspire your curiosities and inspire your uh, behaviors. So this is the model. It's like a spiral. So you are surrounded by the thousands of the books. So it's, if you like books, it's a, like a book heaven. But if you don't like books, it's a book, almost book hell. You couldn't go out because it's a, like, a, like a labyrinth. But anyway, this is it. And even outside, it is the bookshelf is coming out and covered by the glass. And inside, like this. The, this area, the ceiling height is about nine meter. It's quite high with uh, the sky, sky bridge of the internet areas. But you will see different layers uh, are defining the places, but half hidden and half open. So what is happening behind this wall is the stimulations to you, the curiosities. And then if you go up, this is a stepping like exhibition spaces, and the ceiling are designed by the plastic plates. So it is, we have a skylights. So it's softened the skylights and it reflects the bookshelves through the, through the ceiling line. So it is more like a cloud uh, flo floating above you to make a good contrast of the strong, strong bookshelves and the soft, soft ceilings. And uh, yeah, you will see how the openings is slightly showing the space next door or next, next spaces. And uh, the space, like a spiral, is vanishing into the, the end of the spaces. So everything is how does this, showing something is happening behind the spaces, behind this wall, behind the bookshelves. And of course, yeah, sometimes or many times, like these students come to the university to sleep. But uh, I, I like this photo very much because she is representing how comfortable this space is. Because the scale is important. Every space are uh, between this bookshelf wall. And then the bookshelf wall, in this case, about 4.5 meters or something. So really cozy, like a private house scales. But uh, if you stand in the middle of the openings, then you will see such kind of a vast spreading uh, areas of the huge libraries. So you could have the both opposite scales, really cozy small scales and the huge thousand squares of, uh, of the scales. And we try to integrate them together into one place because library requires such kind of a both qualities, cozy corners and comfortable areas to read books. And at the same time, really widespreading areas for people to walking around to find out, exploring to find out some unex unexpected books. So in that sense, of course, here, no nature, no real nature inside, but the, your experience is more like a half walking in the forest and a half really artificial, uh, sharp bookshelves. And in the evening, it's, inside is more coming out. So this is the last one, last project. We won a competition in Montpellier, the south of France. It's really, really nice climate and nice cultures. And uh, even in the winter time, they go out to the balconies to have the lunch or dinners to enjoy that, that kind of a nice, nice climate. So we try to, this is a housing, housing tower. Uh, so we try to translate such kind of their cultures, their climate into the contemporary uh, architectures. So our solutions is this. Yeah, you will see so many huge balconies are stacked up to create the whole housing towers. It's something like this. It's a 55 meter high and 100 housing units are in it. And all of this housing unit has huge balconies sticking out to every different directions. So this is 
like a, in a sense, housing tower with balcony is really usual old typologies. But if we extend the size of the balconies in much, much bigger size, then it is gaining something new or the coexistence of the old and the new typologies together. Yeah, again, view from above. It's just next to the river in a beautiful environment. And this is the plan. So you will see how the riverside green areas are continuously uh, designed. So we try to keep the open areas to the riverside as a op uh, green park. Then the size or the shape of the, the towers are defined in this kind of a really strange curved shape. And it, it has a balcony. So it is finally it's getting more like a, not like a buildings. It's more like a, some creatures or big trees with many, many branches or something like that. So you can see how each different balcony is, is connecting to the apartment house. And sometimes the double, uh, double layer house has different level balconies connecting by the, by the staircases. So it's really, really rich experiences, not only inside, but the more in outside. And from the balconies, you, you will see the Mediterranean Sea. And the opposite side, you will see the beautiful, beautiful mountains. And in the evening, it's something like this. So it is getting one of the, how to say, icon or a representation of the city of Montpellier. But I don't think this architecture itself will be the icons. But uh, I like the whole life of the Montpellier is coming out to the balconies. So the whole structures are just supporting the life. And the huge group, the vertical group of the, the various different life of Montpellier could be the icon of this city. So that is, I think, the basic ideas for that. So yeah, I was talking about the various different kinds of uh, contrast, the nature and architecture, or simplicity, complexity, straight line, and the soft cloud-like situations, furniture, architecture, landscaping, and uh, the small size, cozy scales, and the big, big spreading scales. Yeah, we have, in our world, we have such kind of a various different values. And some of them is on the opposite side. But in architecture design, we can integrate them together to create more values on it, or to create new values between two opposite things. So that is the meanings between nature and architectures. And the nature and architecture is really fundamental. So we are trying to find new integrations or new areas between two, two of them. It's quite exciting, I think. Thank you very much.